You know when old men say, they don't make them like they used to anymore? Well, this movie is exactly that. But is Conclave too slow for its own good? Chris and I will discuss this now. When Cardinal Lawrence is tasked with leading one of the world's most secretive and ancient events, selecting a new pope, he finds himself at the center of a conspiracy that could shake the very foundation of the Catholic Church. All right, so we're going to dive into the good, the bad, and possibly the ugly <laughs> for this. Uh, first off, the good. Okay. First off, we've got a cast. And uh, yes, there's actors in it, but <laughs> these are no ordinary actors. We have Ralph Fiennes as Lawrence. We have Stanley Tucci as Bellini. John Lithgow as Trembley. Trembley. Lucien Masmati as Adeyemi. Adeyemi? I'm not even going to pronounce his name yet. Isabelle Rosalini as Sister Agnes. Carlos Days as Benite. And more. They are just... It is a stacked cast. I mean, just insane but ray finds i mean that is really the where i want to start i mean he brilliant but very understated performance yeah. so he he's cardinal lawrence he's the one who is in charge of running this conclave and the amount of trepidation and reluctance that he portrays i love how it contrasts with that over sense or overwhelming sense of obedience that he has mm. to carry out his duty. You know, he was, he was he was so expressive in this, but not overly demonstrative. I mean, he was very, very reserved, very quiet, very just contemplative almost. I was surprised at the amount of emotional moments that we got from him in moments that I wasn't expecting to see. So, for example, when it just suddenly seems like there's an overwhelming pouring of the man that they've just lost. Never mind everything that's going on. Mm. The closeness. You don't often see that depicted when it comes to stories about the Pope. It's always about the, the larger-than-life mm. character. But here we see characters that were best friends. They were like family. And showing that as Ralph finds in amongst others like Stanley Tucci. Yeah. Absolutely. And Tucci, I mean, he was so good, too, because I loved watching the character change within him. I mean, he gives one type of persona at the beginning and believable. Oh, like, yeah. we, we feel for it. We understand where he's coming from. I mean, he's just kind of like, this is who I am and this is what I stand for. And then as the story reveals itself more, we get more insight into his character. And... That showcases more depth of him. And do you like that? Do you not like that? Well, that that's going to be saved. <laughs> For the little bit that we do get of Isabella Rossellini, she's fantastic. She often steals the show, the movie. When she's in it, she's... <laughs> she's not saying much but her performance is fantastic but when she does say things it's often a mic drop moment and i'm there for it i always love seeing what she's going to do you know she's going to chew up the scene but in amongst these high powered like fantastic actors that we know that do character driven performances she stands her own even with a little bit of time that she's been given because we also have other actors like john lithgow well yeah well and rosalini She's she doesn't speak for like half the movie, yeah. even though she's in it. Yeah, you know, but she still has that commanding performance. And then like Lithgow, oh my gosh! I mean, talk about another just he's a frustrating character because he's an enigma. Mm. I mean, I couldn't tell if he was being treacherous or just being framed that way because of circumstances, because of all the conversations we get. Mm. It could lean one way or the other, and that just you know drove up the intrigue for it. Absolutely. I love Carlos Days in this as well. He plays a character that we know a little bit about. Mm. There's, a, there's a lot of mystery surrounding this character. But every time we get to see a little bit as the story unfolds, he's more intriguing. He's one of those characters that you kind of hold up against as you want other characters to be like this person. <laughs> and you kind of wonder, is he on the level? A lot of that kind of foreshadowing as to what's going to come in the storyline, our characters hold up. And Benet's character is, or ben, the Benet's character, is one that definitely has that going for it. But we can't talk about just the actors. We have to talk about the direction as well. This 
is directed by the dude that did most recently All Quiet on the Western Front. Which won four Oscars. Just, it is, I mean, spectacular. Well, with the direction also comes the cinematography. For sure. Because not only are we getting these very quiet, very nuanced, slow and patient performances from all of our actors, but then the way that the story is visually told is, it's breathtaking. I mean, it is just stunning to look at. There is so much symmetry that we see. And something that we were talking about after the film ended, because we just sat there almost in stunned silence, the bravery and the strength of resolve to sit on a situation, to sit on a scene or a uh, just a, you know an environment mm. <laughs> where maybe nothing's going on, and to let it be yeah. for a minute. I yeah. mean, it, it's brave. There are shots in it, even at the end, that I think many other directors, and I say a lot of other directors, would have been too scared to yeah. leave in. This speaks to a confident director. Now, this director hasn't done that much, or according to his IMDb page, but if you look at All Quiet in the Western Front, which is an incredible film, and if you haven't watched it, you definitely should go and check that out. But there's an expertise there that comes into a confidence in directing. Mm -hmm. And this film shows that all the way through, through the mise-en-scene of the scenes that we get. The, uh, I guess the ability to stay on a character for longer that feels comfortable, but it's purposeful. So it builds tension, it builds character, it builds understanding. And in a world where our shots average, what, three seconds, yeah. maybe, per cut, this one goes well against the grain and it sits there and stays on a scene 30, 45 seconds, maybe even a minute mm. and just is beautiful. It allows us to take it in and the variety of shots that we get also within this. I mean, there are some wonderfully wide shots that just take in the expanse of something as the character passes through it. But then also we have very up-close, intimate, personal shots. Mm -hmm. Like even the ones you were talking about at the very beginning where we watch tears running down a character's face. And it just, it puts us into their space. Like we're invading them and getting just way too close and personal. But that's what we need because it's now engaged us within that character's life and lets us experience their emotions. Mm. So... When we talk about the actors and the performances they're giving, we're talking about the cinematography as well. I've literally written a line here that says, the acting combined with everything else, because everything else in this film is a character. So we have the cinematography that stands on its own as a character telling the story visually. We have a lot of directors that work in Hollywood at the moment that do that really well. But there's not a lot of directors that have managed to take characters of each perspective of the film so we have the actors that have been directed really well. We have the cinematography, the director saying, I need it to look like this and be brave enough to stand on that. And then we have the score, <laughs> which is incredible in itself, but also totally a character. It is sparse at times. I mean, there's like a single stringed instrument, maybe, to just accentuate little bits here and there of emotion. And then you'll get a full orchestra coming in so good. And it, I mean, it, it could rattle your chest mm. because of how powerful it is. And then something that is not used very often, at least in American films. I find American films have much less of this because we need to fill it with sound. Right. Silence. Yes. Just to a person or two people sitting in an area, no other music playing, no nothing. The breath between them the pauses and then the dialogue and it allow I mean it becomes so much louder and so much more powerful mm. in those moments and the decision to use or to not use the score yeah. is also a brave choice. So this again comes down to direction and editing. So the editing oh. has to be spoken about here because it's one of those circumstances where you know the director sat with the editor hand in hand and gone painstakingly through the edit 
many, many, many times to get it to speak a certain language, the story that the viewer needs to be able to get and understand. Now, I think this film is brave, but I don't think a lot of people are going to watch it. I, I think you're absolutely right. Some of it's because it's kind of that old school way of telling a story, that it is very deliberate and very patient, which in today's storytelling translates to slow. Yeah. But while it's patient, it's also anxious and suspenseful and stressful at times. Mm. The slow is used as a dirty word yes. often in reviews. And I am guilty of it myself. Sure. I've often used it in reviews and gone, it's slow. But you can have slow that is purposeful for the momentum. I know that's an oxymoron for the storyline. And it works here purposely to build tension. Like we said, when there's no audio, when there's no sound, as in no score or music coming mm -hmm. in, two characters are literally, or a single character on screen, yeah. giving a bit of dialogue or doing action, as in physical, looking at something, investigating something, being brave enough just to do a single shot, steady, watching that character and the story unfold. It's so bravely done. I love that our conversations that we watch and listen to in this mm. are layered with meaning. Oh, yes. I mean, it's it's not only the words that we're hearing, but it's all of the emotions that are carried on the face and built with the backstories that we have slowly and, and you know, earnestly gotten through mm. each interaction, that it's just piling on these, which is then showcasing and unraveling the mystery for us, but not fully. You know, and I call it mystery. It's not, this is not like a murder mystery. Don't think of no. it as that. It's just, there is this, it's an unknown outcome that we are progressing to. Yeah, I mean, I like the, the multifaceted layers that there is within the story. So for one, it's the conclave. We're having a new Pope because he's died. And then we have the story of the Pope himself and his, the friends that surround him. Mm -hmm. And then we have the whole kind of idea of what it means to have a Pope and religion. And that kind of filters its way throughout the story, combining but pretty much both of those stories. We see how it affects people or the, the larger than life zeitgeist because they're in their own little world. Like mm -hmm. if you're outside of it, you can see it as one thing. But if you've ever had any sort of idea of what religion is, then you'll kind of know a little bit about this. But I, I, would, I would think that not many people know the real intricacies. And that's partly where this film shines. Because the cinematography is so, so uh, precise at showing us what it takes, what the conclave is. There's some beautiful shots just of costume designs, table settings, uh, food that's prepared mm. in such a precise and like loving way. Yeah that you can see what it means to these people that are involved with this big conclave. It's a big thing in this world. And the rituals For sure. that they go through too. Yeah. Even like outside of the conclave, but then once they're sequestered inside and just happen where they take their vote, how they carry their vote, how they put it down and how they, they recite these set of words and then how they deposit the thing mm. into the collection thing. I don't know what you call it. Big giant bowl type of thing. <laughs> but all of this, it's pomp and circumstance. But I was riveted mm. as we watched this, you know, and they do such a great job within the editing of showing us the first time, just showing it all so that we get an understanding, especially if you're not Catholic or you've never seen a movie that showcases any type of conclave like this. Then they don't show us as each vote passes all of the nuance again. We get <laughs> little snippets to progress the story along yeah. so that it's still very dramatic, it's still yeah. very intriguing and engaging, and yet not dragging us through all of it this. It could have easily been boring. Oh, absolutely. But it's edited in a way to progress the story. And so all of that is fantastic. That's all the good. I think you touched on a bit of the bad with that this isn't for everybody. And for that reason, the film's going to have a very small, precise niche. And I would encourage people to maybe step outside of their comfort oh zones of what they normally watch and give this a go. 
merely for the acting and the look of film. If you love film at all, this should be on your watch list. Yeah, especially if you've ever, because we've done this also, and in, in especially with the plethora of superhero movies and sequels and all of this, when we bemoan the fact that there's not a lot of original content mm. When we get it, we need to celebrate it. And this one is, I mean, it it blew us away. Yeah, it did. And, but I do see the ending. This can trigger some emotions. So I was going to call this the ugly. Not because it is ugly, but I think the reflection of society Ooh, yes. could reference, it could regurgitate an ugliness on what this film touches on. Yes. Which I thought was brilliant and I didn't see coming at all. Not at all. Couldn't have guessed it. Nope at all even though part of the outcome was where i believed the story was heading for you sure. did too yeah, i did yeah. yeah yeah but then the, <laughs> then there's more surprise. yes yeah. so i liked what it did for that mm, i agree yeah so overall conclave is a masterfully told story using unhurried dialogue and action to craft a gripping drama Okay, have you seen any great thrillers lately? I would love to hear about what you watched in the comments below. When Chris told me we were gonna go watch this, I kind of rolled my eyes and thought this could be incredibly boring, but I'll watch it because Ralph Fiennes is in it. And generally, whatever he's in, he is good in it, even if the film is bad. I was happily surprised. I was blown away by this, and this definitely should be on your watch list. Do yourself a favor, go and watch it just for the craft that's on display here. I'm gonna give this 4.5 Nicolas Cages out of five. <laughs> and you got one. I would have liked to have given it a five, but I just don't see myself watching it that often. And for non rewatchability, for that reason, I will give it just under that five. But it's close. I can see that. So thanks so much for watching, but most of all, until next time, remember. Live long on Tuesday.